this debate about what is green, I mean, I have to say, I, I like to think we've left that behind here. I mean, we went through a lot of navel gazing four or five years ago. Um, the difficulty is this, that, that the need to green things, and it's shorthand, is the need to bring our economic and social footprint within what the planet can sustain. I mean, the one thing which is scarce... I mean, there's, there's no scarcity of human ingenuity. There's no scarcity of natural resources to be exploited in, in, in a realistic sense. The Earth's crust's quite big. There's a lot of it. Uh, the real scarcity is the planet's capacity to absorb waste streams. That is what we're short of. And currently we're treating the planet as though it was just unlimited. Uh, and it isn't. We, we, and it's catching up to, with us rather rather spectacularly because we've done all so much research on climate. We know so much more about the atmosphere and the atmosphere-ocean interface as a result of 20 years and mind-bogglingly large sums of money. Uh, I mean, it's been a really incredible ride. We know a fraction uh, in many other er environmental areas. But, I mean, the, what, so what's green is, is really about absorbed, uh, absorptive capacity of the planet. And so, in a sense, all economic activity has to be greener. There's not two bits. There's not an e there's sort of an economic bit, and then there's a green economic bit. Just like there can't really be a green innovation bit, and then another sort of innovation bit. It, it's all got to be linked up. We've just had this debate on green bonds, by the way. You know, trying to, to the f financial uh, arrangements. What's a green bond? Well, at the end of the day, the the hundred trillion is it the hundred trillion, Mr. Tamaki? The global bond market. 90, yeah, yeah. I mean, these vast sums of money, I mean, they've all got to be green, because if they're not, you're still not addressing the problem. But, of course, to get there, you have to say that something is green to distinguish it from that which is not. And I think that's really the challenge probably here. Anyhow, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased Andy's heard this, because we, we thought we were the only people who had these sort of existential and, and metaphysical discussions, and it looks like you've got some too. But just on indicators, if I may, I mean, we have done a lot here. And I, I do think that the green growth indicators... Uh, really do have real uh, uh, they 've got some real bite i mean the, the ones with, that we do on on carbon both on a production and uh, embedded uh, you know on, on a consumption basis these are real indicators uh, and the the newfangled environmentally adjusted multi factor productivity indicator really is a significant step forward methodologically in trying to analyze growth in the way which takes account of these things. But we, we need the same for innovation. Let me just, before I ask Andy to speak, tell you that when I came here in 2010, which was at the time the green growth strategy was halfway through, there were four directorates of the OECD involved. So even from then, it's been a very horizontal affair, and the four core directorates were and are still to this day the economics department, the Statistics Directorate, the Science, Technology and Innovation Directorate, which was then still called the Science, Technology and Industry Directorate, but it's now got innovation in the place of the eye, and the Environment Directorate. Now, we're much broader than that. We're much, much more horizontal today. But I, this really, Andy's area, is the area where I think we all need to do more and we need to listen to you more. Because I'll just make an observation as a former politician. The, the public really haven't got a clue how this is all going to be solved except that except that technology will come along. There is an extraordinary faith from those of you from the STI community that you that you're going to have some answers sometime. 